lowest states in telehealth to one of the highest in a very short period of time. Tonight on this special edition of Finding Hope, we look into the state's use of telehealth during the coronavirus pandemic and how it's been a life-saving tool for thousands of Idahoans. Plus, we look past the pandemic to see how the use of this technology shifts in the future and how it could become a primary method of care. Optum Idaho presents Finding Hope, a new way forward. The coronavirus pandemic has changed most aspects of our lives, including how we see the doctor. But telehealth has emerged as a silver lining. Good evening. Thanks for joining us in tonight's Finding Hope, A New Way Forward. I'm Jessica Taylor. Over the past few months, there's been a dramatic increase in telehealth services. And it's likely each of you watching this program will use telehealth or have the option to from this point on. So how has the pandemic shifted telehealth in Idaho? If you look at the months of March through May of last year, there were about 3,000 telehealth visits. For that same time period, we're looking at 117,000 telehealth visits for this year. For behavioral health appointments through Medicaid, the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare says there were 450 telehealth visits. For that same time period, we're looking at 53,000 this year. Uh, and that's actually expanded to include substance abuse uh, as well as just not, not just your normal counseling. So uh, we will get back to both telehealth and normal visits as appropriate. Telehealth claims are also up in other areas of health care, and many health providers say fields could even be dominated by the services. It's not just Medicaid users or behavioral health appointments seeing this significant increase. Across the state, those numbers are going up. Regents Blue Shield of Idaho says their claims soared in the past few months. Dr. Amy Kahn says telehealth could end up being the doctor in your pocket and the convenience of it will lead to its application in other areas beyond behavioral health like chronic disease, diabetes management and dermatology. Even though we've had our virtual care policy in place for several years, less than 10% of our uh, providers really use those virtual health or telehealth visits, but we've seen an over 4,900% increase since the COVID pandemic hit. So almost overnight, we saw an adoption and the, of the delivery of these visits to our members, which has been pretty remarkable. I also think for our docs who have health concerns of themselves, it allowed them to feel much more comfortable continuing to see patients. And it's a similar pattern for other large insurers in the state. Blue Cross of Idaho says they've gone from practically no telehealth claims to nearly a quarter of all claims in the state being for telehealth services. From January 27th to February 2nd, Blue Cross of Idaho says they processed 108 telehealth claims. From April 6th to April 19th, that number shot up to 10,718. It's close to an 11,000% increase. Basically, any service that can be provided appropriately in, in, in a, or by a provider uh, through a telehealth, either audio or video setting, uh, we've offered that as a benefit to our members during this time, and we've seen uh, a lot of Idahoans using that opportunity. The sizable jump helps provide essential care to thousands of Idahoans who otherwise might stay home instead of going to their appointments. Doctors worried at the start of the pandemic, those with chronic illnesses would miss those important checkups. Telehealth helps with that. Blue Cross processed more than 90,000 claims since March this year, and they're extending telehealth services until December. These numbers sound impressive, but why is it important to see these trends and how do those numbers actually impact us? In 2018, Idaho had the second largest shortage of physicians in the entire country, only beating out Mississippi. Within our already limited number of doctors in the state, the majority practice in the most populated counties like Ada County. Doctors say with telehealth, they can see more patients in a day and they can see patients who live far Farther away from our bigger cities, meaning the increase in telehealth is actually a much needed increase in all health services for a majority of our state. 
While telehealth soars in use, it's not a new concept. Psychologists were using telehealth well before the pandemic, but providers say the added stress and anxiety caused by the coronavirus has proven the need to expand it. Idaho News 6's Stephanie Garibay spoke with the Idaho Psychological Association about support telehealth offers rural communities. When Governor Little announced the stay at home order, the Idaho Psychological Association shifted their focus to one service they already offered, but knew it would benefit everyone at this point in time, telehealth. The need is just so incredibly high. So many people are worried. Um, people are having financial stress. We're seeing definite increases in anxiety. A lot of people are having sleep difficulties. Um, and psychologists are experts in helping people deal with these kinds of issues. So it's a great time to seek support, get a little assistance and work with a professional who can help. And Amy tells Idaho News 6 telehealth services have been used for more than a decade. But with the pandemic, this is a safer alternative than face to face therapy. She says their goal with offering telehealth services is to maintain contact with people we are already seeing as well as offer some services to people who are medically fragile, um, who have a number of risk factors and really are trying to limit any kind of exposure at all. So it really is a great way to open up access. They hope to continue to offer telehealth services even when things start going back to normal. That's really the hope at this point um, is that this will create a new service line that many people will now be able to access Access, especially people in some of our remote and rural areas, we're really hoping it will allow them to get more support and services that they need. Amy tells us she is grateful they were able to accommodate and offer these services throughout this time. I'm thrilled that we're able to do this. I think that it really is important for people to get that support. This is such an important time um, of adjustment. We want to stay connected with other people and there are lots of mental health professionals out there ready to help. In Twin Falls, I'm Stephanie Garibay, Idaho News 6. The most important part of telehealth is whether or not it works for the patients. To have a successful telehealth appointment, doctors say patients need to be prepared for their visit. Patients from Eastern Idaho share their perspective with Local News 8's Carol Honus on why telehealth is their preferred form of care. Hi, I'm Carol Honus reporting in Eastern Idaho. COVID-19 has changed our lives and in some ways it's actually been for the better. I mean, all kinds of businesses have had to learn to get the job done online. So they have saved on office space, commuter travel expenses like gas and parking and just time. Medicine has changed too with patients seeing their doctors through telemedicine now, telehealth instead of in-person visits. Now there are pros and cons to telehealth, but one thing is agreed upon by almost everyone we talk to in the medical field. Telehealth is here to stay. How are you? I'm great. Can you hear me? Dr. Nathan Snedden is an MD of interventional spine and pain management. His office started using telemedicine about four months ago when COVID-19 really hit. It's not for every doctor's visit. Particularly in my new patient evals, I need to see patients face to face. I need to examine patients with my hands, my ears, my eyes, and especially my hands. You can't do that via telemedicine. And for those new patients who you've never seen, never met, you really can't uh, substitute it with telemedicine. But it's excellent for follow-up visits and certain kinds of ailments. I think maybe a dermatologist who uh, can usually examined just by eyesight for the most part. I hope I'm not wrong in saying that. I'm not a dermatologist. But generally those kinds of specialties where a patient can be evaluated primarily by sight and sound would be okay. Administrators at Bingham Memorial Hospital have telemedicine available for every speciality. In the last four months, the hospital has booked 5,800 appointments. Skipping the office visit has lowered the exposure to infection from other sick people in the waiting room. The patient has a lot of responsibility too when it comes to making telemedicine work. So when you have your appointment, make sure you're in a quiet corner, that the doors are closed so the dogs or the kids can't come in and make noise. Have all your prescriptions out so if the doctor has any questions, you'll have them handy. Make sure that you have a tablet so you can write down any questions that you have before the meeting and then any instructions that the doctor gives to you. Dr. Snedden says insurance used to refuse to cover telemedicine appointments, but that's all changed. 
changing because of COVID-19. Most appointments last about 15 minutes, and it is proving to be a real lifesaver for rural areas that are hours away from a specialist. Telehealth also offers the opportunity to expand reach for all patients across the state, especially those living in underserved communities. Terry Riley began offering telehealth services at the very beginning of the pandemic. They switched services to virtual and had staff see patients from their homes. That way providers could still see and manage behavioral health needs. The staff also uses telehealth services to discuss symptoms for COVID and ongoing health needs. Another thing that we're doing is our psychiatric medication management, um, which is visits that have to do with managing um, mental health issues. Dr. Barron with Terry Riley predicts there will be an increase in people coming in for physical exams soon since that was not offered at the beginning of the pandemic. However, Terry Riley says they'll continue to use telehealth. Later in tonight's special, we'll show you how they're planning to expand this service. Telehealth is being used on a broader scale as well to limit exposure, free up space in the hospitals, and as our Madeline White reports, it helps regulate Americans' mental health right here in Idaho. Telehealth isn't perfect. Internet accessibility is a problem for people, especially in some rural parts of Idaho, but it's better than nothing, especially in this time of uncertainty. And even people who aren't chronically having problems with mental health are now they're, they're in fear of uh, taking pay cuts, losing their jobs, having to file for unemployment, things that many, many people have never even thought of. An American Psychiatric Association poll from March shows that nearly half of Americans were anxious about possibly contracting coronavirus and 62% were anxious about a loved one falling ill. What we've seen recently is a significant increase in the prescription of anti-anxiety medications. But telehealth has played a major role during the pandemic in keeping patient oversight operating while flattening the curve. It existed pre-coronavirus, but it was somewhat limited to mostly rural areas. That's not the case anymore. Patients are no longer want to go to the emergency room for other kinds of problems, so they don't want to necessarily go to their doctor's office because they're afraid they'll be in a waiting room with a bunch of sick people. The Trump administration recently changed their policy in response to COVID-19 so that Medicare patients may temporarily visit doctors and clinicians by video conference at no additional cost. Effective for the more than 320,000 Idaho residents that are enrolled in Medicare. This is a real benefit uh, for seniors and and all the beneficiaries. Dr. Sullivan hopes this coverage remains. Because doctors and patients are kind of being forced to do this now, maybe it's making them see the value. Yeah, you're right. You're <laughs> right. It's like an accidental uh, evolution. It's it's sort of like a natural experiment that we weren't looking for. We weren't entirely prepared for. But OK, we're going to learn from this and we'll come out better on the other end. As we explained earlier, telehealth isn't limited to behavioral health needs. In fact, it's being used by a Magic Valley based physical therapy clinic, and they're paving the way for more hands on practices to follow suit. Having been deemed essential, right physical therapy remained open throughout quarantine with precautions in place. Despite being open, the company shifted to telehealth to reach their patients. The adjustment was tough at first, but founder Brian Wright says it allowed them to expand their reach. I've had people unexpectedly reach out to our company from different states in the United States trying to ask for help through telehealth. So we're now seeing more people say, hey, I've read your blogs or I've seen you guys on, on social media and I really want to get your treatment. Wright Physical Therapy says they expect to continue using telehealth even as patients start showing back up in person. Governor Little has held several press conferences on Idaho's current handlings of the pandemic. At one, he stated there are testing deserts in Idaho, which highlights the healthcare deserts in our state as well. During a pandemic, the last thing you want to lose is doctors, especially those closest to the healthcare deserts in our underserved areas. At the start of the pandemic, worries rose about different clinics possibly shutting their doors for good. Volume numbers were down for the first few weeks simply because people weren't scheduling appointments. Telehealth has been able to keep those doors open. Governor Little loosened restrictions for telehealth visits, which allowed for more access. I was a bit of a skeptic, uh, but the evidence is compelling about how much 
uh, how effective uh, the delivery of telehealth is. As you're aware, you may be aware, a lot of our uh, uh, telehealth was because I waived some uh, rules at the state level and the federal government waived some rules. We're trying to aggregate those rules so that when we get out from under the emergency order, we can continue with the efficacy of that. But I Insurance companies also reimburse doctors at equal rates to in-person visits, which was especially helpful for smaller rural clinics. Health officials have told us they predict this could have economic impacts that last two to three years. Hospitals and doctor's offices are able to continue their work with telehealth, and now schools are providing access to mental health services for their students virtually. A growing number of schools in Idaho have licensed counselors on site, so students can get mental health services in a place they feel comfortable. As classes move online, so do those services. School-based therapists provide support for students, all without needing to leave campus. Childhood and adolescence is a difficult time, and having counselor available to help kids navigate through that um, can be very, very helpful. Now that kids are out of the physical school building, these counselors are using telehealth. Right now, we all need to um, do our part to reduce the spread of the coronavirus. Districts across the state are making sure students stay connected to mental health services. In Caldwell School District, they use a service called Life Counseling. Staff are reaching out to students and resuming services despite the closures. In the CUNA School District, Children's Therapy Place is in contact with all the students they work with in the schools and are actively arranging online appointments and check-ins. The Boise School District has a hotline families can call into and seek support. A local school administrator helps translate that for Spanish-speaking families as well. You know, I have mom saying, what do I do? My son is really struggling, struggling with anxiety. Um, you know, and I help them, you know, refer them to the right person. Um, some of the families are struggling with um, being tested positive with the virus. Um, and then again, the same hotline, I know what they have to offer. So I immediately, I send emails and I contact them. Terry Riley's counselors have adapted all their counseling options to be online right now. They plan to send the school-based therapist back once it's approved to return to school. Schools adopting telehealth means even more people in the community can be reached. There's another big group that benefits from the expansion of telehealth services, the Boise VA, which provides health care and mental health services for local veterans, has also implemented telehealth for their huge network. In a normal month for mental health, the VA conducts about 40,000 telehealth appointments throughout the country. But in April, while the country faced the pandemic, that number rose to 900,000. The Secretary for Veterans Affairs told us when he took over the job, he wanted to focus on getting care to Native American veterans and rural America, and he believes telehealth makes that much easier. We're the world leader in that, and uh, I think for mental health, it's really uh, one of the biggest steps forward uh, in recent history, because what we're doing is we're allowing veterans to stay in their homes or stay someplace where they're comfortable. Another new program the VA is currently implementing is putting telehealth clinics inside the pharmacy department at Walmart to give veterans another way to access health care and mental health. Still ahead on this special edition of Finding Hope, looking beyond the pandemic, how telehealth will likely play a key role in how we receive care. Hear from those experts next. How do things work? Things that give so much joy and happiness. How does everything that is so beautiful happen without us really understanding how it happens? How do we help people lead their healthiest lives? How can shared intelligence spark brilliant solutions? How can doctors and patients build even stronger relationships? How can we improve the quality of health care and make it more affordable? How can we help manage chronic illness? How can we help people keep an eye on their health 24-7? How do we bring everyone together so that health care finally works for all of us? We know how. We are the how. Optum. How well.
gets done. If you're watching this and want to take the first step towards getting help, we have resources available for you. If you're a patient at St. Luke's, you can have your primary care physician send in a referral. Their support team will help you install the video platform for your appointment. St. Luke's says their telehealth appointments are for people of all ages, and they found great success with kids in the 10-year-old age range. They are still accepting new patients. If you're a patient at St. Alphonsus, you can have your doctor send in a referral as well. St. Al's says depending on the patient's insurance, they can either set up a telephone or video call. Idaho statute requires all new patients be seen over video conference. You can also call Terry Riley's and they'll walk you through setting up an appointment over the phone. St. Luke's also reminds us the symptoms of anxiety and depression, which more people may be experiencing with the pandemic. Symptoms to look for are increased feelings of sadness, hopelessness, worry, difficulty feeling in control, isolation, and difficulty getting out of bed. If these symptoms sound familiar, you can make an appointment to be seen by a counselor. Also, if those feelings and thoughts turn dangerous or more intense, you can call the Idaho Suicide Prevention Hotline. That number is on your screen. Terry Riley was a leader in adapting telehealth at the very beginning of the pandemic, and they're preparing to lead the state in their continued usage of telehealth as well, given their virtual appointment numbers are still rising. Our Karen Lair checked in with the CEO and shows us how they're planning for the future. So I would say like everybody, COVID has turned our world upside down. Heidi Hart is the CEO of Terry Riley Health Services, a community health center treating 40,000 patients across Southwest Idaho. Unlike most medical facilities, they refuse to let low income prevent a patient from receiving proper care. Certainly if somebody has Medicare, Medicaid, commercial insurance, we you know work with those partners to make sure people have access, but then we also have a sliding fee scale that makes us um, able to match the cost of health care with people's financial resources so that nobody goes without access. But as coronavirus cases started climbing in Idaho, Terry Riley turned to telehealth. When people call and schedule their appointment, our scheduling team is the very first question that we ask them is, do you want your appointment in person or through telehealth? Just like many work meetings today, telehealth appointments can be easily set up online through Zoom or FaceTime calls. Virtual visits have been wonderful for medical and behavioral health in particular so that people can still see the provider, but they can do it from the comfort of their own home. In spring, about 60 percent of their appointments operated through video calls, as many patients preferred avoiding face-to-face -face interactions. As um, things settled down and people felt more comfortable, it dropped down to probably about 20 percent of our visits by telehealth. And now that there's a spike going on back in the community again, we're seeing an uptick in telehealth again. And for the future, with or without concerns of COVID-19, Hart says telehealth for Terry Riley is here to stay. It's been something that both providers and patients have come to appreciate. It's faster, it's easier, and um, and so I don't see it going anywhere anytime. Karen Lair, Idaho News 6. Telehealth improves lives by easily connecting patients to care, but it's also literally saving lives by identifying child abuse. Local hospitals are reporting an increase in child abuse, in part because of social isolation. Not as many schools or community groups can look for those signs, but as the pediatric surgeon for St. Luke's shares, this technology can be our greatest tool for identifying child abuse in the pandemic. This year stands out from prior years, and in particular because of both the number of cases that we're seeing and children very young, under a year of age, and the severity of the abuse that we're seeing. St. Luke's CARES program, which evaluates concerns of physical abuse, sexual abuse, or neglect, saw 74 inpatient cases of child abuse in 2019. In recent months, they've seen a worrisome trend. This year, we've already seen over 50 in the first six months, and the severity of those injuries have increased including two child abuse related fatalities that have happened. So the severity of the physical abuse has increased uh, in this time period. They aren't seeing as many outpatient referrals during this time. We do think that that's because the schools are the primary reporting system for that. There's never been a straightforward solution to end child abuse, though it's much harder to do with the increased social isolation caused by COVID. There are ways to help identify and stop it. I do think that electronic technology is extremely helpful. Zoom, 
Zoom communication, Zoom parties, Zoom family reunions. Dr. Bowman says particularly in the trauma department, the families need close follow-ups and support. Telehealth, while not a perfect fix, can offer that. It's very important because it's accessible through a cell phone for families. They don't need special technology. They already have that. The cases are severe. They're seeing multiple injuries on a child. The best way to protect a child is someone making that. As Dr. Cox said, when you have a concern, act on it, even if it's just a suspicion. Listed on the screen is that number to call and report, along with additional resources for families who may be struggling, including the Women's and Children's Alliance and the Idaho Children's Trust Fund. The uptick in telehealth care was an emergency response, one with loosened restrictions given the pandemic. As we look forward, possibly to a time where a cure or vaccine exists, telehealth might serve a different purpose, and health officials say it won't return to the back seat. Doctors say it will likely even dominate certain medical areas. Health officials say the security of digital platforms used for telehealth will improve in the future. Certain exceptions were made under the provisions of expanded care during the pandemic. Platforms that are more like on your phone that aren't necessarily compliant with the requirements for security or privacy. So I think what will change is we're seeing more and more practices and healthcare systems secure those HIPAA compliant platforms. It's possible telehealth will be the dominant practice in some areas. Some specialties will get that done. For counseling, we can do that. It's clear that that be the, the primary, um, most effective, cost-effective thing to do. Delivery of telehealth will likely get even easier after establishing secure platforms. Be like the doctor in our pocket, of course, with the input from our trusted clinicians who are guiding that care. Specialists only work in a handful of areas across Idaho. Group telehealth arrangements could also occur more for getting a second opinion on health issues. It's putting two doctors' heads together. In-person visits will likely never go away, but health officials say telehealth will only expand. Dr. Larson says there are a few main things that make for successful telehealth care. First, a provider needs to have an established relationship already with the patient. The patient needs to take responsibility for their medical care, and the patient should get ready in advance for the appointment by writing down their prescriptions, symptoms, and questions. In the last half hour, we've seen how telehealth has gone from an emergency practice to a critical tool for Idahoans in the midst of a pandemic. We showed you how telehealth helps connect our rural communities with healthcare in places where the nearest in-person clinic is several hours away. Telehealth also fights the stigma often associated with behavioral health by connecting you with counselors and psychologists from your own home. And we've seen how telehealth will likely expand to other fields in a post-COVID era, whenever that is. It's easier now than ever to get connected to resources, and we hope you find a method of care, whether it's telehealth or in-person counseling appointments that work for you. To rewatch these stories in their entirety or to find helpful websites and phone numbers, you can always head to IdahoNews6.com and click on the Finding Hope tab. Finding Hope, a new way forward, has been brought to you by Optum Idaho.